Ganyu, a character so powerful that she quickly became her own league when it came to DPSs. Ganyu quickly blew everyone else prior to her release out of the water when it came to damage. And today, we're going to be taking a look inside Ganyu, the goat of damage. Or should I say, Coco Goat. Anyways, we're going to be discussing her kit, constellation, artifacts, and more in this guide. Hi, my name is Avarice and welcome to my Ganyu guide. And if you're looking for something specifically, I'll be leaving the timestamps in the description below. So for a quick overview of Ganyu, we're going to be working with a level 80 Ganyu with level 8 talents. So at level 8, we have a base HP at 8,643, which is below average. Ganyu's base attack is at 295, which is actually the highest out of any bow user. And her defense is 556, which is slightly below average. Keep in mind that these stats can quickly be changed due to the artifacts that Ganyu has and the weapon she has as well. To ascend Ganyu to Ascension Phase 5, which is the Ascension Phase we're going to be working with, you're going to need 1 Shibata Jade Silver, 9 Fragments, and 9 Chunks. You're also going to need 18 Whopper Flower Nectar, 30 Shimmering Nectars, and 12 Energy Nectars. You get these by killing any Whopper Flower of any kind. You're also going to need 108 Chi Sing, which can be found in the mountaintops west of Liwei, and 26 Hoarfrost Cores, which only can be obtained by killing Cryo Regis Vines. But if you want to send Ganyu to phase 6, you're going to need 6 gems, 24 more energy nectars, 20 more hoarfrost cores, and 60 more cheesing. And this is her talent materials. This applies only if you want to get one talent from level 1 to level 8. For this, you're going to need 6 whopper flower nectars, 22 shimmering nectars, and 10 energy nectars. You're also going to need diligence books, which can be found in Taishan mansions on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. You're going to need 3 teachings, 21 guides, and 10 philosophies. You're also going to need 2 Shadow of the Warriors, which is a weekly boss item from the Golden House. Getting all of this would cost a total of 502,500 Mora. This is the cost of getting 2 talents to level 8. And this is to get 3 talents to level 8. Now, Ganyu's talents isn't the most complex, but it is pretty interesting once we look at the scale of her damage. Her normal attack, Leotrian Archery, has a pretty high combo of 6 attacks. Here you can see them in 4 angles, and here is in slow motion. Although she has a pretty high combo, all of these attacks actually does pretty low damage. Her first hit does 54.2% damage, 60.9 for her second, 77.8 for both her third and fourth hit. 82.5% for her 5th attack, and 98.5% for her 6th attack. Her plunge attacks are actually quite average and almost all bow characters share the same damage. Her plunge does 97.1, while her low does 194.2, and her high does a 242.6 damage. Now Ganyu's charge attacks is where things start to get interesting. At first, her aim shot is 75% damage which is all bow characters damage. Her first charge attack, Icy Arrow, does an average 198.4% damage, which is all bow characters charge attack at level 8. The difference here is that Ganyu can pretty much do it almost instantly. But Ganyu's charge attack level 2 is where things escalate pretty quickly. If you have a full Ganyu charge, it fires a Frost Flake Arrow and it does 204.8% damage which is already pretty high. But not only that. If this arrow hits anything, whether it be an enemy or not, it will create a bloom damage, which does 348.2% damage, which is super high. What makes this so powerful is that when it hits an enemy, it doesn't do damage to that enemy directly. It creates an AoE cryo damage, making you be able to hit multiple enemies at once. Ganyu's skill, Trial of the Chilling, makes Ganyu quickly dash backwards, leaving behind an Ice Lotus. This Lotus attracts nearby enemies causing them to hit them instead of Ganyu or your other party members. This Lotus however isn't invincible and can be destroyed. Its endurance bases off Ganyu's max HP and once the Lotus is destroyed or its duration ends, it will quickly pop and deal AoE cryo damage. This skill isn't really that complex, all you gotta do is trigger it once you feel like you're in danger and then boom, they're attracted to it instead of you. If it's not destroyed though, it will last a total of 6 seconds before popping and its cooldown is 10 seconds. Ganyu's burst, Celestial Shower, is actually quite interesting. Ganyu summons a cryo pearl that creates a large cryo field in which ice shards will rain down on top of enemies. This costs a moderate 60 energy, 
And what makes this very interesting is that the duration is 15 seconds and the cooldown is 15 seconds as well. So if you have a pretty good energy recharge on Ganyu or even have a battery for her, you can actually have her burst be up 24-7 if you could time it correctly. Her first passive talent after ascension level 1 is called Undivided Heart, which is after firing a Frostflake arrow which is basically her fully charged shot, will increase the crit rate of that arrow and its room effects for 20% for 5 seconds. Her second passive talent, which is unlocked after Ascension level 4, Harmony between Heaven and Earth, causes 20% more cryo damage bonus for party members inside of Ganyu's burst. Here you can see Ayaka without any help from like anyone else, and this is compared to her inside of Ganyu's burst. And for her third passive, Preserved for the Hunt, just refunds 50% of the ores you use after crafting a bow weapon. And for talent priorities, first I will recommend for you to level up her normal attack first. This is because this is what you're going to be using on Ganyu a lot for, so it's better to have that up leveled up because that's what causes the maximum damage of Ganyu. And for her second priority, I will say her burst. I'm saying this because for her skill, which is her third priority, you won't use her skill for damage. You'll probably use her skill to get out of a sticky situation or to gather uh, enemies around it. You can use your skill to quickly make enemies gather up in some place or and freeze them up. You won't really want to get damage out of that skill. And now for constellations. Her first constellation, Dew Drinker, makes it so after firing any charged shot, it will decrease enemies' cry resistance by 15% for 6 seconds. Fully charged hits will regenerate 2 energy directly to Ganyu as well. Her second constellation, the Auspicious, will make it so her skill has an additional charge. Nothing too complex here, it's literally just an extra charge. Cloud Strider, her third constellation, simply increases her burst level by 3 and makes the max level be 15. Ganyu's fourth constellation, Westward Sojourn, makes it so enemies inside her burst will take an increased damage of 5% at first and it will increase 5% more over time, the max being 25% damage. And if the enemy leaves the burst radius, this effect will still apply to them for 3 seconds longer outside the radius. Her 5th constellation, the Merciful, simply increases her skill by 3 and makes the max level be 15. And Ganyu's final constellation, the Clement, makes it so after using a skill, the next shot fired within 30 seconds will instantly be a charged shot. Now for Ganyu's weapons, we're going to be discussing pretty good faster weapons that can be used on Ganyu and pretty good viable weapons that are 4 stars for Ganyu as well. For her first 5 star is the Amos Bow. This bow is like a love letter to Ganyu. This bow skyrockets your damage by a lot. The second side on this bow is attack and after you hit an enemy with a normal charge attack, this just increases your damage for a total of 5 stacks. For her second 5 star weapon we have the Skyward Harp. The second side on this is crit rate and this increases your crit damage by 20 and 40% which is obviously pretty good. Her hits have a small chance of creating an AoE attack dealing 125% physical attack damage. This only can happen between every 2 to 4 seconds. And for her third 5 star weapon we have the Thundering Pulse. The second side is crit damage and this increases your attack by 20 to 40% for pretty much doing regular attacks. And now for her 4 star weapons. First we have the Prototype Crescent which is a really good option for Ganyu. This weapon is free to play friendly, you can easily just craft this bow and then automatically have it. The second subset on this is attack. And if you hit enemies on their weak points not only will you increase your attack, you will also increase your movement speed by 10% for 10 seconds. For the second 4 star choice I recommend is the Black Cliff Warbow. The second stuff set on this is crit damage and every time you defeat an enemy, Ganyu's attack will increase up to 3 stacks. Although I understand if you don't want to use this bow since you do have to pay a lot of coins in order to get this bow. And for her third bow we have the Stringless. This is more if you want to play a support Ganyu. The second subset on this is Elemental Mastery and this will increase the Elemental Skill and Burst Damage by 24 to 48%. Although if you don't have the Stringless, a Sacrificial Bow can be pretty good for a support Ganyu. The second step set on this is Energy Recharge and you can actually kinda cheat if you don't have a C2 Ganyu. If you use this bow and use her skill, it has a pretty large chance of resetting her skill. And now for Artifact Sets. I'll be going with the top 3 Artifact Sets that can go pretty well with Ganyu. Obviously there's more, but this is my top 3. So for the first artifact set, I recommend it's a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer. 
This is geared more if you want to make your Ganyu your main DPS. And it's highly recommended to have a Hydro character on your team since this does increase your crit damage even further if your enemies are frozen. For the second artifact set is a 4 piece Wanderer's Trope. This is geared more if you want to make Ganyu more of an elemental character or make her work in melt teams. This will not only increase your elemental mastery by 80, it will also increase your charge attack damage if your character is a bow user and that's what Ganyu uses. Obviously this isn't the most easiest to get since these artifacts only drop through bosses and the only other way to get them is through combining your other artifacts which um, can be pretty pricey. <laughs> I tried many times before and I still get jacked so it's up to you if you want to waste your artifacts on them. Obviously getting 4 piece sets is pretty hard no matter what artifact set it is. So. For my third choice, I'll be recommending something that's the best of both worlds, which is a 2-piece Blizzard Strayer and a 2-piece Wanderer's Trope. This can make Ganyu work both as a main DPS or an elemental character, though I do recommend to have more of a melt team if you're gonna rock these two, two sets. I'm saying this because that cryo damage can really increase the damage when it comes to melt teams. Now that we got the artifact sets out of the way, let's talk about the artifact stats. If you're going for a main DPS Ganyu, you're going to want an attack percent sand, cryo damage goblet, and a crit rate or a crit damage hat. Now hear me out on this one real quick, if you have a 4 piece blizzard strayer, you might want to hold off on a crit rate hat. This is because as we just saw before, if you have a 4 piece blizzard strayer, your crit rate already increases if the enemies have cryo applied to them and if they're frozen. And for main DPS Ganyu substats, you're going to want crit rate and crit damage as well as attack percentage. I will also say Elemental Recharge as well over Elemental Mastery only because if you're rocking the 4 piece Blizzard Strayer, Elemental Mastery doesn't really do much to frozen enemies. It only increases the shatter damage but if you focus on Elemental Recharge you can have that burst much more often and have your enemies frozen much more frequently. Now for a support Ganyu. If you want to play Ganyu as support, you're going to want an Elemental Mastery Sands, Cryo Damage Goblet and a Crit Rate or Crit Damage Hat. But if you're playing Ganyu exclusively as support, like you're just gonna use her skill and her burst only, like you're not gonna attack with her, you can change out the hat for a second Elemental Mastery's hat. But this artifact stats leans a little bit more if you're gonna use Ganyu as uh, someone who's gonna cause a lot of melt reactions. And for the substats for these, you're gonna want crit rate and crit damage, Elemental Mastery and energy recharge. Ganyu is really compatible with almost anyone in Genshin, so I'll be listing just a few characters that is the most compatible with her in my opinion. There's so much more characters compatible with her, but this is just my top picks. For some characters though, I'll be leaving like an extra 4 star, I wouldn't say replacement, but someone who plays very similar, because I know not everybody has that limited 5 star. So for the first compatible character with Ganyu, I would say Shunha. She's the latest character that released recently and her burst and her skill can increase Ganyu's damage by a lot. In case you didn't know, Shanha's burst increases enemies cry resistance and her skill increases cryo damage. For the second compatible character, I will say Mona. Because Mona can trigger a freeze effect on enemies. You could have Ganyu's burst up and release Mona's skill and have them frozen for a pretty good time. Not to mention Mona's burst can increase your damage by a lot as well. But if you don't have Mona, I will say Sengsho but he's very situational. Go with Sengsho if you're using Ganyu as a support because Sengsho's burst will not apply to Ganyu's charge attacks. So only use Sengsho if you're using Ganyu as a support. But other than that, Barbara can be a pretty good replacement to Mona. For the third most compatible character, I would say Bennett. I wouldn't put him next to Shanha because even though they both improve your damage, Bennett is a pyro character while Shanha is cryo. Ganyu and Shanha can increase elemental resonance, but Bennett cannot since he's pyro. However, if you have Bennett in your team, you can actually cause a lot of melt damage. Just hit enemies with Bennett's skill, then shoot them with Ganyu's charge attack, and if you have a lot of elemental mastery, that will deal a lot of damage. Coming in 4th, I'm going to say Zhang Li. This is because Ganyu can die pretty quickly, 3 or 4 hits and she's out. So Zhang Li's shield can actually protect her for a pretty good time. However, if you don't have him, you can use Noel. Both can be pretty good shielders and a sub DPSs if you need them to be as well. Coming in 5th is a little bit of an unpopular pick but I'm gonna say Yoimiya. This is because her burst can allow her to create pyro damage while she's off the field. In case you didn't know Yoimiya's burst marks enemies and it will inflict pyro damage every 2 seconds if you hit them with any attack. 
But if you don't have Yoimiya, Shangling is a pretty good choice as well. If you're not confident enough that you won't get hit, you could have a shielder, then use Shangling's burst, then get up close and personal with enemies and shoot them causing a lot of health damage. And for my final picks, I will say Rosaria. This is if you want to play a support Ganyu and you want that burst to be up almost 24-7. I will also bring Kai into this because they're both going to play the same role. Both of these characters can use their skills to give Ganyu their elemental particles to help Ganyu have her burst much more often. You don't need these two. This is only if you want Ganyu to have her burst up much more often. You could have a large amount of energy recharge on Ganyu, then have more energy recharge on Rosario and Kaya, then give the elemental particles to her. And you can have Ganyu's burst pretty much always on since the burst and the cooldown is pretty much the same amount of time. This is more of a mix and match system. You don't have to use this character or that other character for a support or sub DPS if you don't want to. You can pick anyone from here. So this is just an example. So I'm going to pick out Shanha, Mono, and Bennett. As you can see here, my timing is a little bit off, but I can deal over 36,000 damage just by a regular attack. You can obviously play around with this. If you have an elemental mastery artifacts on her, you can you can have her with Bennett, Changling, and Shanha, and someone else of your choice. Now, for a few tips for Ganyu, although she isn't that much of a complex character, she can die pretty fast. So, for the first tip, I recommend is to have a shield up at all times if possible. This can either be Diona, Noel, or Zhongli if you have him. And there are enemies that can teleport to you or rush towards you. So if this happens and you feel like you can be in danger, just use her skill to get out of that tight spot. Like I said before, her skill makes enemies surround it. So once you activate her skill, you don't have to worry about them as much anymore. For her third tip, it might be obvious, but stay at a distance. She's a bow character. You don't want to be in front of enemies' faces with a bow. Obviously, you're a bow character, you don't want to get too close to enemies now, do you? But even though Ganyu's charge attack can charge up pretty quickly, if you let enemies get too close to you, they can easily hit you before you could fully charge. Her fourth tip is hit enemies on their weak spots. Some of you may not have known, but shooting most enemies in the head actually does more damage than hitting them anywhere else. Now for the fifth tip, which not a lot of people know, is that if you're wondering why Hitler Churls can block your level 2 charge attack, even though it's an AoE, it's weird, but in order to hit them while doing that, you have to hit them with a level 1 charge shot. As you can see here, even though I shoot behind a shielded enemy, he still blocks my level 2 charge shot. But if I use a level 1 charge, they don't block it and I can still hit them. Although it's far easier said than done, especially trying to do this in the abyss where you're in a time limit and you're trying to kill as much high leveled enemies as possible, but I think that's a little useful information for you to know. So for my personal thoughts, I believe Ganyu works pretty well with almost everyone. It's crazy how well she works as a DPS as well as a support. Ganyu even set a new bar when it came to DPS characters, but of course that did bring its consequences. Like the community wanting new DPS to be as, just as strong as Ganyu and complaining when they aren't. Like, why would you pull for this character that's supposed to be a main DPS when you can save your primos for a Ganyu rerun and pull for that instead and literally have like one of the strongest characters in the game? Of course, no character is without its downsides. I do believe Ganyu has some of her downsides as well. One of them being is how easy she is to play, it kind of gets boring. Like, everything becomes a breeze, you kill most mobs with like a shot or two and if you feel like an ounce of danger, all you gotta do is use your, use your skill and then that's it. The enemies will be drawn to the skill instead of you. But yeah, it does get boring because since she's a bow character, you don't want to be that close to them. So most of the time you end up like just standing there, just clicking every two seconds. And unsurprisingly, that does get boring. But of course, the positives do outweigh the negatives and big time on this one. Because if you need a good DPS or uh, another support, Ganyu can work either way for you. She does crazy damage and her support capabilities are just as good. Like I said, you can have like a 24-7 Ganyu burst up if you time it correctly. And since it's cryo and the area is pretty large, you can easily be like almost any hydro character and simply cause a permafreeze. She is also not that super complex, she's easy to learn and I wouldn't say hard to master. Pretty much easy to learn, easy to master. So I'll say she's pretty beginner friendly. Not only that, she's also free to play friendly because the prototype Crescent is actually one of her best weapons and it's a craftable bow. 
So pretty much anyone can have this damage I demonstrated. Like, you can go out there right now, pull for Ganyu, level her up a bit, and slap a prototype percent, you could have the same results. I remember after her first run was up, all the people who trash talked her and skipped her thinking like she was just gonna be a cry amber, were now like begging for like a Ganyu rerun, telling people that the Ganyu rerun is gonna happen next ever since 1.6, and it's weird to finally see it here. Hopefully they're gonna eat good, and shut up, hopefully. <laughs> But if I remember correctly, I think I remember that the Raiden Shogun having like the most cells out of any character and in the shortest amount of time. I think the Huta rerun actually got pretty close to that. I have to check on that, but I do believe that Ganyu's rerun is going to produce more revenue than both of them and quicker. Like Ganyu's that crazy. Anyways, if you enjoyed this guide, I'd appreciate it if you click that like button or even subscribe if you want to see more guides like this. I'll be making one for Zhongli very soon, so if, if you want to see that, stay tuned. Thank you for watching the whole way through, and I will see you next time.